Welcome to Teens on Topic. I'm your host, Emma Arnson, and today we're talking about something interesting that I think a lot of teenagers have a lot to say about. But before we get to that, let's see what the adults around Davis have to say about it. Uh, do you think they should regulate vaping more? Uh, probably not. I'm pretty hesitant to allow anybody to regulate anything. I kind of want everybody to just leave me alone. Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, because it's very addictive and it can be very detrimental to the health. And I feel like a lot of people don't know that. Just because, you know, it's like the new thing, the cool thing. So, but yeah, I do think there should be regulation because it's obviously dangerous. Yes, there should be more regulation on vaping. Yeah, actually. I think too many kids are addicted to, to vaping these days. Nicotine, it's like, you know, we're like kick cigarettes, but now everyone's addicted to jewel pods and like that. So, yeah. oh, I cussed. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> no, less. Why do you feel this way? Survival of the fittest. <laughs> what do you mean by survival of the fittest? Like People should be able to do vape tricks wherever, you know what I mean? And if you're good at vape tricks, then you're going to survive longer. And if there's crappy vape juice, then you just die quicker. All right. I was stupid. You were stupid in the first place to even try vape tricks with <laughs> vape. Do you feel that like fruity flavors with like jewels and stuff are actually like introducing teenagers and kids to vaping? I really don't think so. I mean, I think the difference is negligible. If you have like an addiction or you're interested in it, I don't really think it matters how it tastes. Uh, I think the more it's like candy, the better. So like more strawberries, more, uh, more berries in general. I think berries is the way to go. So you think that uh, vaping has like no harmful side effects? I think it's probably just as bad for your lungs. I don't know what that glycerin does to your uh, respiratory system, but you know, I think you're smoking basically. So. You know what you're getting yourself into. Berry, berry flavored vape clouds is the future. So users beware, you know, it's just as bad as cigarettes in your opinion, or? Bro, just put a, put a warning label on it. Just warning, may cause glycerin sneeze. Interesting, okay, thank you, awesome. Thank you. Oh yeah, man, you know, I don't really want like kids to just be addicted to vaping based on like fruit loops and like all this other stuff, you know? Are they not already regulated like cigarettes? Yeah, so they're working on regulations like to jewels, which are regulating like flavors like mango and stuff. But um, many people are wondering if it's not enough to just like regulate um, these flavors and they should do more to like regulate the flavors. Yeah, I think until we know, you know, the extended consequences of it, it should definitely be regulated. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I think so because they still have a good amount of nicotine in it. So I think anything with a good amount of nicotine in it is going to be addictive and so it's detrimental to your health. So yeah, just like any other drug, like cigarettes and stuff, it should be taken more seriously. Have more yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. I definitely think that appeals to people. I think if they were, you know, not so vibrant and uh, appealing to people, then less people would, you know, it's like trying a new ice cream flavor. It's like, oh yeah, let's try unicorn poop, you know? like. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. For sure. Thank you, man. Awesome. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there was a lot of different answers that they brought up. So uh, what do you guys think about what they had to say? <laughs> <laughs> Unicorn boob. I, I'm ac absolutely in favor of pretty much any regulation on behavior that is bad for people, you know, especially when it's targeted at people who are under 18, who just their brains are generally considered by the scientific community to be less able to make good decisions. You know, um, and even if it's not legal for them to do that, things that enable that um, are, it's functionally making it legal, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think pretty much the more restrictions, the better. You mentioned people under 18. What about people over 18? Because in California and a couple other states, the legal age to vape and smoke cigarettes is 18, but here, or excuse me, California is 21, but in other states it's 18. What do you think about that distinction of ages? Should should it be 18 or 21? What do you I think? I say make it 70 years old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's, I mean, I, I think um, if it is something that is that obviously a bad decision, I think more regulation of it. Uh, is good. I don't think there's really anything positive that it brings, and the fact that it's something that's new 
and is not really as like ingrained in American culture means I don't think the public would have so much of a problem with that that it would cause some sort of like citizens revolt, like taking away all guns would or something. Yeah, I think that that's definitely a good point. Um, I like know uh, a lot of adults who like struggled with like uh, addiction to cigarettes and so mm -hmm. then like transitioning to like e-cigarettes was a really good option for them. But I think then the like negative side of that is like we were raised and like we were taught yeah. growing up that like cigarettes are awful and like they smell terrible and like they're horrible for you. Mm -hmm. Never smoke them. Like I know I would never smoke a cigarette in yeah. my life and I'm probably a lot of people who like um, vape and stuff would also like say the same thing um, but because it's like flavoring and because it's like new and different and because we don't really have like the all the information to like see like the long-term effects yeah um, I think that's one of the reasons people are doing it a lot more and the campaigns to make it look not cool have clearly not worked yeah but um, I think that, like, a lot of cigarette like anti like tobacco cigarettes ads were like that for a long time mm. until they started kind of working for our generation I felt like yeah and then people switched back over and started vaping again I think I, I want to go back to what Adam was saying is that this is a bad decision on the part of people who use um, vapes and I think in the most part that's right I just don't think that I trust the government to tell me what a bad decision is I mean if we're gonna start from saying that you can't uh, vape, then where are we going to go from there, right? You can't pray this way, you can't do this. I don't think that it's um, up to the government to tell me what a bad decision is, as long as I'm not hurting anybody else. Um, and you're not hurting anybody by vaping, uh, except for yourself. Well, um, you know, I feel like we shouldn't just look at it um, on the micro level. You know, my name's Andy, and I feel like if you look at it on such a, like, you know, tiny micro level of, uh, is it just hurting you? Um, then sure, there's maybe less of a justification for banning it. But when you allow something to be used by more people, it becomes more part of the culture. It becomes more normalized. And that's why you see tons of teens vaping all the time, right? There was pretty much, there were very, very few people who were our age who were addicted to nicotine, say, five years ago, right? And it's something about being normalized in the culture, I think. That is very true. I yeah. see it in Mexico and I know in other countries such as India, you know, smoking is extremely prominent, and there, you know, kids begin see their parents smoking at the age of eight years old, and they take it up when they're 14 years old, and they become smokers for life, and then, you know, they have health complications later on in life. So, yeah, it does become ingrained in the culture. And there are plenty of regulations on, on you know, things like, say, alcohol, and I don't think any of those have translated into regulations on religion. I mean... You're allowed to pray when you're under the age of 21 still, despite that you can't drink until you're 21. I, mean, I don't really what's see... What's the distinction between alcohol regulation and vape regulations as of now? Right? Because um, adults can drink alcohol and adults can vape. I think there's much sure. less regulations, though, like on vaping. Like, and that's the... Uh, and there I was... Mean, you still need a license to sell. You still need to be old enough to buy. Yeah, but like... Right? It's... Uh, sorry, you go ahead. Yeah, I don't, like, think that that's like necessarily true because like if you get a vape you can like refill it's much easier to refill it like when you if you're buying alcohol you have to go and buy alcohol i mean if you buy a big it. bottle of vodka you can drink it over and over again you don't yeah. see a lot of kids drinking alcohol in high school though you do not, not in oh, high yeah, school, not on, not on the not campus, on campus. Not on campus. You're yeah, right. No one agree. says who put toilets in the alcohol room <laughs> <say who> <laughs> And so there's there's also the aspect of it being more easy to do on carry campus. around. Yeah, um, and a lot of teachers like didn't know like what jewels <laughs> were. Like there was a story about like a kid plugging in a jewel to his teacher's computer because he thought it was a USB. Like and, and so it's a lot about like transitioning and like and like learning and um, yeah. I mean like my younger brother got like a pamphlet home that was like this is why vaping is bad. Like look at all the flavors they can have. And it's like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I think we're going to yeah. see a big pushback on it. Um, I don't think that, like, it's going to get that much better right now. Like, I think there's a lot of, like, people struggling with addiction, and that's just, like, part of, like, life, I guess. But I don't know, it's kind of, like, sometimes, like, it's, it's, it's just new. Like, it's just the same thing we've been seeing, but now it's just this new, um, like, form of it.
Yeah, and like you said, it's it's rather new. I'm not particularly, I don't know the exact date of when vaping was invented, but I imagine it was way before cigarettes. And cigarettes have been in a lot, or smoking tobacco has been around for a long time. We know the effects of it. Do we know the long-term effects of vaping? No, we don't. And it's not regulated by any department. I mean, yeah, exactly. there are there are major effects that we know of. I mean, there's there are things like popcorn lung, lung that we already know that you can get that are, I think, unique problems of vaping, right? I've heard of them. Um, yeah, and I mean, I feel like the fact that it's been around for such a short time and that there are these like noticeable long-term effects that come with long usage, um, kind of, is is a reason that. I mean, I agree with you I, that, that it should be regulated more, unless I'm mischaracterizing your position. No, it's about Yeah, that. but I think one of the things that's important um, that I kind of wanted to get you guys' opinion on is what do you think about it for people like transitioning from a, an addiction to cigarettes? Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, maybe it should be regulated just like a cigarette, right? Because if you're trying to transition from a cigarette to an e-cigarette, you mm -hmm. would expect the same. Regulations. Sort of is it, are, are they not the same? Are they, do they vary? They're, they're basically the same. It's just cigarette um, regulations are um, more established. They're a lot older. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's the question of kind of weighing the impact of that versus weighing the impact of, of teens. Maybe of, of you know, the, its increased presence in the community of teenagers. So, I mean, maybe, maybe you could come up with some kind of alternative that's more in the middle. Um, like, you know, back probably, I think, what, five years ago, before jewels were around, right, they, it would fit up, it would take up a lot of space, right, and fit up your whole hand, um, and you saw a lot fewer people uh, vaping in high schools then, because it's a lot bulkier, it's harder to carry around conveniently to fit in your pocket, uh, to pretend that it's a USB, so maybe, you know, if it's less, uh, if it's less concealable, that might uh, leave it still around as an alternative for people who are trying to qu quit smoking, uh, while at the same time making it harder for teens to use them in school. Yeah, I think it also has a lot to do with like the advertising and like it was like this like sleek kind of looking thing and right. like much yeah. less bulky and it looked um, like Apple billboards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like the name like Jewel was like ooh. Um, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think that that has a lot to do with it and how they're advertised to kids. I mean like. They're, yeah, they're, there's like different names for them and they like use different things like um, I went on a trip across the country recently and they all had like different slang and like lingo and so it's not just a problem at like one place, it's not just a problem in Davis, it's a problem like around the country and mm -hmm. and so I, I, I think that there should definitely be like regulations placed on that and then also like there needs to be, um, they need to start working the same way they were working with like anti-tobacco, anti-cigarette smoking ads. Um, to prevent um, teens from like getting worse and worse nicotine addictions. I believe they are working with some ads. I've seen them around the city and yeah. you know on the television, but they don't have enough evidence to prove that it's as bad as smoking, which is why a lot of people mm -hmm. are incentivized to, or younger generations are incentivized yeah. to begin vaping. Yeah. And I think yeah. an another thing about it is like for a long time, like we were told, like smoking e-cigarettes is better than smoking cigarettes. And so then people took mm -hmm. that as like, smoking e-cigarettes is okay. Right, like, and yeah. it's, it's kind of like the thing, the campaign with cigarettes, I think in like the 40s, right? Like we have 60% less tar than the next best guy, you yeah. know, that, and you were allowed to say, okay, so our cigarettes are healthy now. Um, I think it's, it's kind of a similar thing that happened with uh, e-cigarettes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, I, I know that a lot of like anti-vaping ads are just like, well, this can lead to smoking cigarettes, right. like yeah. that this addiction will get even more severe that people start picking up cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people have a disillusion that vaping is not necessarily healthy, but it's not unhealthy, that there aren't right. uh, adverse effects to it. There's also, you know, you can find a thousand people who are like, you know, 60 years old and still addicted to nicotine, still addicted to cigarettes, saying like, man, I really, really wish I'd never taken that first cigarette. I think the fact that vaping is more new and is also just generally seen through the lens of being an alternative, um, you don't have a lot of people saying, like, I really wish I'd never taken that first vape, which yeah. may, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> like, it's less ingrained in, in the hearts of kids, like, don't take that first vape, kid, don't, yeah. don't hit that fat rip, man, vaping not even once. I, I, get the the I get the argument, and it's, it's quite common that this is something new, yeah. and that um, 
And I think that's been a real focus of the FDA under Donald mm-hmm. Trump, and that they've really been warring against Juul uh, specifically. And all that's leading to is lesser manufacturers causing these vapes. It's all over the news that the people are buying lower quality vapes that are um, exploding, all those kinds of things. Yeah, that's um, really scary. And I don't think that um, this entire, I mean, you said something about making uh, vapes less concealable. I think that's um, not something that, it's just not a real solution. I mean, making the, the government telling companies how big they can make their vapes is ridiculous. I'd just do I, the opposite of what the TSA does. Be like, if the jewel can't fit, if the jewel <laughs> can fit in this box, then you can't produce it. I yeah, um, it seems possible to me. I just, <laughs> I mean, I just think we're kind of we're this thinking that these are just made for teens and schools, and they're not. They're made for adults to use uh, on their I, own choice. How, how can you say who it's made for? I mean, obviously, Jewel that's, isn't going to say, "Hey, we are making our product for 16-year-olds." But if they're making it more convenient for 16-year-olds, then obviously they're not making it more convenient for 16-year-olds. They're making it convenient for everybody. Yeah. Okay. As a manufacturer, that's their duty to make something more convenient so they can sell more. Their marketing. Sure, and that's obviously what they're going to try to do. But if a side effect of that is that, like, more 16-year-olds are vaping, they are making it more convenient for 16-year-olds, and that's a bad thing, whether or not. They're also doing that for I don't think else. them improving Doesn't their product. I don't think that they should just stop improving their product just because teenagers are more by likely to buy their product. This, by improving your, their product, you mean like m- making it so they can make more profit off of it, right? Making it like more convenient for people to use, right? I don't see why it's better like the seeking of profit by these companies as compared. Like why is the seeking of profit of these companies more important than like preventing people from getting lung cancer? I mean, I mean, I don't think that's the consideration that is on the table. Yeah, but I just, I, I mean, mean, if like if there are government regulations placed on them and they're like heavily like oh like like size regulations stuff like that, is that going to disincentivize those companies from coming up with a better solution that is able to get people like like that is able to move mm-hmm. people away from an addiction that is harmful and ingesting harmful chemicals if they're allowed to like. Um, compete against each other and not be brought down by regulations or like the fear of like it's going to go the other way and it's just going to become way way worse and they're just going to start using harmful chemicals just to make more of a profit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't vape. Don't vape. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good to advice all the, to all the teens out there. Do not vape. Right. Never take that first. <laughs> Never, Never take, take that, that first. first right. Right. <laughs> Well, thank you all for joining us. It was a very fun episode today. Uh, So join us next week.